Me not read the prompt here, no, because me don't want to take any trip to the edge of no earth. Timothy can go by himself. We're going to experience Antarctica from the perspective of a Jamaican seaman, Timothy Kitson, tugboat captain and navigational officer uh, here with us now. Good morning to you. Thank Hi, you for being good here. Good morning. Decked out in your uniform. This can't help you in Antarctica, though. Um, you know, when I'm out on deck, actually, this is fine. Are you, are you serious? I'm, I'm serious. I've been in, I don't know, minus four, minus six degrees Celsius wearing this and I'm perfectly fine. After you don't born here. here. You don't come from here. Everybody tells me. You don't come Everybody from here. Tells me that. Look here, the place is inhabitable. Um, where average winter temperatures can plummet to 56 degrees Fahrenheit, minus 49 degrees right, Celsius. But that is during the winter season in Antarctica. So and in the summer, it's just minus four. Yeah, it's like minus four, minus six, <laughs> thereabouts. Okay, great. Um, let's talk a little bit about how you got into this business. So um, for me, becoming a seaman, uh, my uncle, he was working at Kingston Wharf. And I remember my brother, he went on a summer program. And so they saw the marine pilot or the harbor pilot. He had like doctorship and he just walked off. And they said, you know, that looks like something that Tim would like to do. And so they came home and it's like, Tim, you know, you should become like a marine pilot, you know. And, you know, I knew nothing about the industry or anything. They just but said, why, before you get there, why did they think it would be something that Tim would like to do? Oh, because I love sports, like being in the outdoors. Ah. I'm not the office type kind of person. I love ships, love to work with my hands. Um, they knew that I just love the sea, love the water. I see. So they just said, you know, this looks like something that Tim would like to do. Um, so, you know, I just said, yes, definitely. Once it didn't have to do with the office, I was, I was perfect. Tell me about the studies. So um, I went to the Caribbean Maritime, at the time, Caribbean Maritime Institute, um, which is now the Caribbean Maritime University. CMU. Right, exactly. Um, so they have, there is the, the theoretical side of it, um, where you're in doing in-class in studies, and then you have to do your internship, which is about, say, one year. Mm -hmm. And then after that, once you complete uh, the degree program, you have to do an external exam, which grants you the license to actually work as a ship officer. Um, and that is separate and apart from the degree program. So there's a license that they give you that allows you to work on any vessel around the world. So the internship was, you were on a vessel for the internship or? Yes, so yes. I was actually on a ship, a tanker ship. Um, it's actually here in Jamaica. Mm -hmm. um, so I've left, I joined, that was in 2015. And then we went down to Panama and went to Trinidad. And like, we just went back and forth for just like that, um, that entire year, mm -hmm. right? So it was quite an experience for my first time being away from home. So let's talk about that because when I read your story, it reminds me of Dana Royal's story, Dan Dan, right. who talks a, a lot about yeah, he talks a lot about how difficult it was <clears throat> to acclimatize to that ship experience. And so, how difficult was it for you? <coughs> um, I think the hardest part would have been um, the cultural difference at first. That's exactly um, what he said. Because, you know, there, on my ship, there were Filipinos. Mind you, you know, you have those who are good and bad, just like in any industry, you have people who you have to work with. And sometimes, like, when you're expressing yourself, the, the language of the maritime industry is English. But uh, sometimes, you know, some people, their English isn't so great. So when you're saying something or they're saying something to you, it's kind of like it's lost in translation, mm -hmm. you know. So, um... The lack of communication when you're sailing around the world, um, depending on the type of vessel, because some vessels do have Wi-Fi or internet. Um, so and some don't? Some don't. Mercy. Some don't. So um, the first vessel that I went on, because this is my second time going down to Antarctica, so the first vessel that I went on, it did have internet, but it wasn't as stable as this one. And a lot of times, like, it would just cut out, and you just don't have anything to, like, just notify people. Hey, I'm good, don't worry. You know, so, but... Your I mean, poor family. Yeah, eh? they, they, the, after, used, the, after the first to, no, time, they're yeah, just like... They're acclimatized. Right. Um, Tim, how you end up in Antarctica? I mean, vessel into the region is one thing, but how you reach all the way over the nether side of the world? So, um, I was just looking for jobs. Um, so, I, I knew that I always wanted to work in the cruise industry. And so, I... I'm, a, I'm an extrovert. I like to be around people. No so kidding. I felt like, you know, being on a cruise ship, you're going to meet people from all walks of life, um, not just the crew itself, but any, just anywhere. Um, and so it is like I was applying, um, saw the company, applied to them, and they reached out and just said, hey, you know, we have a vessel. Um, this was, I think, in 2017, like summer 2017. And then they reached back out to me, I think it was around, like, say, in November. And they said, hey, you know, we have a vessel. Do you have all your documents ready? Blah, 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 blah. And they just said, yeah, Tim, um, we put you on in December. 
So I was scurrying, trying to get everything together. Um, and then that was it. I was on a flight from Jamaica connecting through uh, Florida all the way down to the tip of South America, which is Argentina territory. Um, the port is called Ushuaia. Mm -hmm. And then they sail from there two days across Drake's Passage, which I know a lot of people, they hear about Drake's Passage, which is supposed to be like the worst passage in the world where you have like all these 40, 60 foot waves. But it's not always like that. Um, yeah, I've been through it and it's been like flat. Um, and then other times we had a storm and there's like a 40, 60 foot waves like bigger than the ship. Oh, great team. Um, <laughs> sure, sure. So, I mean, just another day at the office. Just another day at the office. Hey, hey. Um, so it's cruise shipping that you're doing? Cruise, you know? right. Wow. Um, so how long in total have you been working in the industry now? Um, if I'm supposed to count after my cadet ship, I'd want to say, mm, cadet ship was like say 2015. Um, a good little one, no? yeah. Tim. Yeah. yeah. You don't tire of it. Um, well, the thing is, is that it's contract based, so it's not like you're always out there. So gotcha. sometimes, when it is that you're off contract, you're home. Um, What's the longest period you've been at sea? When I was a cadet, for okay, one entire for one year. year. I, like, I just wanted to get that internship out of the way. Yeah. So I just just got and, that. And your job entails what exactly? So, um, on the cruise ships, I'm the quartermaster or helmsman. So I would actually be the one physically steering the ship alongside like the captain or the other officers who are there. So um, when I actually say, because this last ship, we sailed from the Arctic in the South Pole all the way up to the Arctic in the North. And so they have like huge like sea ice, pack ice, and you have to be like sailing, going through it. Or like if the ship is going to the port, you have to be docking it. Um, we had a situation where like we lost propulsion on one of the propellers because we have eh? two propellers. What you saying? Yeah. Yeah, last pro lost. On one of the propellers. Mm. So, you're, you're talking calm, do you? Mm -hmm. you, you? You can't freak out when so you So you just took an oar and started to row? Or? No, I mean, it's, it's, it's twin propellers. So you jump started. So just one stops, but you still have the other one that's still going. So, so you, you can still maneuver. One. Right. What's the worst um, thing that's reached you out there? Um, when I was a cadet, I remember we were sailing from Jamaica to Trinidad and um, the engines overheated. And we had to like shut down everything. And then the engineers had to be there working, working, working throughout the night, like 24 hours um, working through it. And it's so deep. Um, like off the coast, the north coast of Trinidad, like 3,000 plus meters. You can't drop the anchor. So we're just drifting, drifting into the Caribbean. And I mean, like, you know, they got it sorted out. But you can't do that on a plane because if a plane loses engines, you and you know, that's it, unfortunately. This team is about perspective. So exactly. on a ship, you know, your engine is shut down. You just allow the engineers to do what they have to do. Timmy, can I swim? Yes. Okay, just checking. <laughs> but I have friends who have been in the industry just as long, if not longer, they can't swim. That's just not right. You don't believe that is somewhere uh, in the Bible there's a commandment that says if you work on the ship, you must can't swim? Uh, I just we have enough life-saving appliances. It no matter. I mean, so. come on. So what is the hope for you? I mean, you're, you're on cruise ships now. Is that where you well, plan to stay? Actually, no. So locally, I am a tugboat captain. You know, that's where I have yeah. the bars. So um, on the tugboat, um, those are like wreckers or, or tow trucks of the, of the sea. So docking, assisting on docking and undocking the ships. Um, we so you, either, you go out in the tiny boat or you climb up that ladder on the sides and you help them. Is that it? <laughs> no, no, no. So uh, that's the small boat that would transport the pilot to the ship. But uh, you actually have vessels that are a little bit bigger, let's say about 25, 28 meters in length. Um, they have a lot of power, not made to go fast, but um, enough power to like pull or push yes, the ships. Yes. Or sometimes you'd have like a floating barge, we go with the tugboat, you tie up with the, the cables and then you'd pull it from maybe like one port to the other. You know, I've often heard about how well-trained and in-demand our CMI and CMU graduates are. Yes. Like, when you finish, you don't have hand to, 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 to deal with the number of offers that you get. And it's clear that you've had a really good foundation from them. Yes, yeah. definitely. definitely. So, so you're world-class now, sir. You could call it that. Well, definitely. come on. You don't have to be shy about it. <laughs> um, uh, it's really, really good to meet. Any, mil any myths you want to dispel? For us before we go? Myths. Um, what do you eat out there? Oh, man. <sighs> it's, it's a hit and miss. So, I mean, it really, depends. it really depends on the chef. The chef sometimes is the one who can make your day. Because, I mean, you could be on a ship and you have, like, an amazing chef and, like, the food is good. But you have sometimes, most times, the food is they not cook, so like, good. cook, like, Aki for you? No, Jamaican food is... Mm, that's not nice. You right. can't carry some Aki on the ship, honey? I wish. Honestly, I wish. Cannot really but, do. You know. yeah. Well, you're on a cruise ship, so you, yeah. you are, you so, are but I'm sure you're welcome. My, my, <coughs> my main um, job, I would say, especially like when I'm here, and it is that I do plan to be here 
um, because I do love being a captain. Um, that's you know what I had always strived to become to um, get to the height of you know my my career, and um, I just love um, what it is that I do. Mm -hmm. um, although it is that you know I decided not to become a marine pilot. Being a tugboat captain feels almost just the same because you're working right along with them. Mm -hmm. um, you have to communicate with them. They're communicating with you. One day, do you want to go to marine piloting or no? Or you finish? Uh, no, I, I gave up on that idea. I think like. Um, after my internship as a cadet. Yeah. Right. So, um, you know, is your room this big? The room? You're in the bottom of the. Uh, so no, captain's captain's cabin a little bit bigger. Oh. But the rest of the guys is probably like a, yeah. a little small. But uh, but you know, if the baseline is this, then and, and your room is a little bigger, it could be like this. Maybe. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Give or take. Look, man, I spent a week on a cruise ship, and after day one, I was ready to overboard to swim back to shore. I mean, it's just too much water for too long. Right. So I rate all of you who can do it for a long, long time. It takes right. a special individual. Um, congratulations to you. Antarctica, is that like the most amazing place that you've been? Uh, no. So been after we left uh, Antarctica, we sailed from Antarctica to the Falkland Islands, which I'm sure you know about yes. in the 80s. Yes. And then after that, <laughs> in the crossing, the uh, equator heading north, to reposition for the other season we went to capo verde to reposition for the other season right for the other season forgive me um so capo verde which was one of my favorite places definitely because when i got there and i went on shore i had a jamaica shirt um i had my jamaica sweater the bob marley tam and um you know i was meeting the locals and saying you know hey i'm jamaica I even showed them my driver's license just for proof <laughs> and they're just like what you're jamaican my brother come here come here yeah. you know we, you know they have this great love for jamaica they talk about all our songs you know, what it is that we did for them, especially like when they were going through a lot of hard times mm -hmm. and strife, apartheid. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And then home now, no? definitely mm -hmm. they said, this is your mother country. Um, so I really felt the love there. Um, Where do you hope to go that you haven't been? Uh, I haven't. I think I've pretty much like I've been there. Less, done. I've, I've been it's to I saw a few other places. Um, so after that was the Azores, Canary Islands, England, Scotland, Wales, Norway, Greenland, Iceland. Um, you yeah, know, up into the Arctic. No, so it's, been there and done that. You know, um, and then the, the cool thing about it is that when you meet so many people from around the world, um, it really opens you up to, you know, what other options are out there. So, I mean, you don't even have to be like a seaman like myself. You know, they have electricians, plumbers. Um, you could be seismic survey. Um, you could be a bartender on a cruise, you know. Um, you know, and you don't even have to like do a degree program mm -hmm. per se, you know, like, if you want to get to that point, just um, take the time to research the online. So for other people out there who just say, you know, they don't want to do the traditional jobs, there's so many out there that can provide yeah. just, yeah. And it's a good living. And it is, you and know, and you get to see the world, um, the exposure I've had. So I, I speak like, say, a bit of Spanish to help myself. I would say not fluent, but um, enough to travel. And then I have like a few friends from Ukraine, Russia, so I've learned to speak like a little bit of Russian, um, just like, you know, in conversation with them. So I see them in the morning and I would say like, Roman, Roman, dobre utra, katnela, kapa You know, Me too, right to I have chair. that problem all you the know? time. So, I, <laughs> I'm not sure what he said, Landia. Oh no, I just said, good morning, you know, happy to see you. See, I knew that. You know, yeah. it's basic. Okay, you know? wow, yeah, well, so you're telling the young folks who are watching that this is an industry um, that they shouldn't sleep on. Right, CMU no. is a great place to go and get your degree. Um, there is CMU, but I won't limit, tell a person to limit themselves to CMU. Right, because, because there, as you said, there are other industries. There are other industries. Yeah. You know, yeah. there's so much more out there. And um, don't be afraid to ask people about, like, what else is out there. If you meet someone from CMU, especially, like, say, a seafarer like myself, I think we may be able to tell you more about it because of the exposure, the people that we have to always interact with. Once we start sailing, you reach to another port. You know, there's, you, have other you have other Jamaicans on your trip? Yeah, so there was actually um, one guy from Morocco, Besso, another guy from uh, Linstead, and there was this lady. Say Linstead. Linstead, Linstead. About your Linstead, you are there far too long. Yeah, Come well, on, man. <laughs> Tim, let me, let me reroute you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. right, right. <laughs> so, um, but the one from Morocco, Besso, I think he migrated to. Um, Mauritius, he married a lady from there. There you go. So, you know, and there he actually go. met her on the ship. It's a love boat. <laughs> the love boat. Okay. Right. So there are all these possibilities. Not only can you work, but you can find love too. <laughs> so nice to meet you, sir. Thank you. Which part in Jamaica are you from? I am from, should I say, San Andrew? 
Upper Saint Andrew. Oh, I'm from 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 Kingston, Saint Andrew. So okay, okay. I'm nearby. So big up to all of Tim's people. Um, we're sure they're very proud of right. you. And so are we. Thank you. That's why I look very teethable and very warm. It's um. That's why I said I can like manage this minus six degrees weather. I remember when I went back to the port um, in Oshwayo and it was, let's say, 15 degrees, 10 degrees. And I'm walking around just like a t-shirt and just jeans and everybody's looking at me like I'm crazy. Yeah, you're not but I mean, when you're working in like this icy climate kind of conditions for so long, it's just like you increase it by 10 degrees. You're just like, oh, this is... Mm -hmm. this. You've gone to the dark side for sure. <laughs> just make sure you had keep warm. Oh, no, Jamaican definitely. warm. Definitely. Good to have you here. Thank you so much. Thank you. Timothy Kitson, tugboat captain and navigational officer and Russian speaker, apparently, and a little bit of Spanish as well. Up next, we're going to take our Jamaican citizen test. Shauna, you didn't warn us about it. Never going to fail in a car. You don't even know dashing, so you know it's a problem. We'll be right back after this. <laughs>